Landon, Craig and Annie here. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, Annie. Hi, Craig. Great to hear your voice, buddy. It's great to see uh, that we have crossed paths once again, my friend. I'll be announcing (laughs) your name (laughs) uh, at Snapdragon Stadium tomorrow afternoon, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, You were just in Panama. Crazy way to make your debut. Great result, though. 2-0 win over Santa Fe. What do you feel like you learned about your team uh, the first 90 minutes you got to see him on the floor? A lot. Uh, Training sessions are one thing, but there's nothing like the game. So you have to feel what it's like to play the way we want, I want them to play. And honestly, uh, I would say 85 to 90% of it, they got uh, almost exactly right. So I was very impressed by that. And most importantly, when you win, it accelerates the process. So we've, we've had now four total training sessions and it makes it difficult to, to learn. Um, but they've picked up literally everything I've given them so far, they've picked up, processed and implemented almost to perfection. So I think we're on the right path. That leads me right into a follow-up, Landon. I mean, when you come into a team mid-season and you haven't had a chance to put your stamp on it from the beginning of the season, what is the challenge with that? And how do you go about that process as quickly and smoothly while still kind of building trust with your players as possible? It's a great question. Um, That is the challenge and that's the line you're towing. How much do you change quickly? And again, I I was in on... Saturday for my first session and we were playing a game Tuesday. So how much do you change without throwing everything out the window? Because, you know, the the team has struggled this year. It's not all bad. So how do you keep the good stuff, start to implement some new stuff while not overwhelming them? So I, I tried to be deliberate and slow initially, but then after the first training session, honestly, they were weeks ahead of where I thought they would be after one session. And so I said, okay, well, then we'll just keep pushing and we'll see how much they can handle. And then they played the game and they handled it well. So I'm just going to keep going. We only had, you know, we had a quick turnaround. We only have one training session we're about to have today. So we will just continue on the same theme for the Angel City game tomorrow. But then next week we get a full week of training. So I will start to to just give them more. And, And until they show me that they can't handle it that quickly and they need to slow down i'm just going to keep accelerating it landon obviously getting the attack going is paramount to get this wave team to where they want to be and where they expect to be i don't read too much into a first starting lineup especially when you don't have your full squad you didn't have your uh some of your olympians back but melanie barcenas did get that start on tuesday and it was definitely intriguing to wave fans uh throughout the city uh without getting into specifics are are you gravitating toward more of an offensive flow lineup going forward yeah i mean that's 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 what i know as a player and that's what i know as a coach when i was coaching san diego loyal the last four seasons um we we either led the league or were second in the league in passes completed procession percentage um times we got into the opponent's 18 yard box goals scored expected goals scored chances created so that is what i know and that's what i'm good at and so i'm not going to veer away from that and and this is no different and you know no surprise here but mel is an incredibly talented attacking player um what i wasn't expecting was how honest she's been defensively so she continues on that trajectory. She's going to keep getting more minutes. And I think the sky is the limit for her. She's in- insanely talented. Landon, probably no one understands what Alex Morgan has achieved more than you and what she's accomplished. How do you get her going in terms of scoring and how important is it to get her going? Uh, well, she's accomplished a lot more than I have, which I <laughs> remind her of. She's got multiple medals um, for winning things. Um, I I don't. I don't focus on scoring. Um, I know that is sort of been the knock against her this year. Uh, there are, I'll, I'll just give you, I'll show you a story. My first season in Major League Soccer in 2001, I didn't start the first game. I didn't start the second game. Uh, these were my first professional games ever. The third game I started, and we didn't lose for the next 12 games. And guess how many goals I scored during that time as a forward? Zero. Zero. <laughs> but my coach, <laughs> That's great. my my coach kept me on the field because we were winning and I was doing a lot of things to help the team. Yeah. Alex, from what I've seen and what I saw in the game the other night, um, an incredible teammate. She really cares. 
she's happy when others score, which is unique when you're going through a scoring slump because you generally you go into yourself and you're worried about yourself and why are you not? And she helped the team. She helped set up the first goal. She did uh, almost set up another goal just with her running and her pressing. So she is still a phenomenal player, and I could care less. If she doesn't score another goal the rest of the year and we win, I don't care. And, I, and I'm you know helping her understand that that doesn't matter to me. She's going to score. She's too talented and good to not score. And in the way we play with what I just told you, we're going to create a ton of chances. So she is going to score. The biggest thing for her is how we manage her through the rest of the year, um, making sure she's not, and I've already talked to her about this, not playing 90 minutes every game, not starting some games so that we keep her fresh and ready when she does come into the game or that she's ready to start when she does start a game because I want to I want to use her in the right way to make her successful. And some days that's going to mean coming off the bench on a hot day or when we travel a long way and impact the game in the last 30 minutes. And some days it's going to be what she did in Panama, which was lead her team to victory by starting and then coming off for 10 minutes to let someone else go wreak havoc. So we've had great conversation about that. She, she gets it. Um, and I think so far she, she seems excited to, uh, to work together in this way. Landon, I know you got training coming up, and certainly we hope we'll get the chance to chat with you again here as the season goes forward. So I just got one more for you uh, here sure. this morning. And when I was thinking about talking to you, it, just, uh, it occurred to me, like taking a step back to the big picture, that tomorrow you will be on the sideline at Snapdragon Stadium as a head coach, a beautiful stadium that has become a vibrant home for soccer, MLS is coming to San Diego in 2025, and you have fought for all of these things over the course of the last several years in San Diego, and yet here you are Saturday, and you'll be there, but you'll be there as head coach of San Diego Wave FC, and it's not exactly the, the way you expected to be there, but you're there nonetheless, so I was just wondering if that, you know, if that had occurred to you as well. Yes, uh, that's, uh, yeah, I had not thought about that at all. Um, in 2014, the season I retired, I got cut from uh, the national team right before the World Cup and didn't get to go to the World Cup. And in the World Cup, we played against Germany, and the German goalkeeper was Manuel Neuer. So about a month and a half later, we played in the All-Star game in Portland against Bayern Munich, and the goalkeeper for Bayern Munich was also Manuel Neuer. So I scored against him in that all-star game and i remember thinking well i was planning on scoring against him this year but i was planning on doing it in the world cup and not in a, in a game here so i was planning on being at snapdragon one day coaching soccer i didn't expect it to be in this manner but honestly craig um this is absolutely where i'm meant to be at this moment and i'm really excited for tomorrow it's going to be a beautiful day um my family's excited for it. it's 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 going to be a fantastic day there's a lot of a lot of people in the stadium. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So if, if people haven't decided what they're going to do tomorrow, I would say go. Um, it's, it should be a celebration. Naomi Gurma and Jaden Shaw are back from the Olympics with their gold medals, and um, I think it's going to be a great day. It will, and it's going to be so fun to be there, Landon. I, I look forward to it. The match at 1.30 tomorrow, so for Padres fans, you can 100% do the double and, and go to Snapdragon, <laughs> take in the whole match, head on down, use the use the trolley, uh, and be there in plenty of time for first pitch. Uh, LD, best of luck, and uh, we'll chat to you down the road, I hope. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it.